That moment when you're reminded of a classical meme that is from Yu-Gi-Oh. I have to say, I'm so glad I'm finally able to talk about Tower of God Episode 2. This latest episode of Tower of God, I think many can agree, was definitely a step up in comparison to the first episode. If you love the first episode... After watching this episode, you're going to be like, whoa, this is really good. This is a lot better, etc. And the world building, the character introduction, etc. is really fascinating. And there's so much to love with this episode. There's so much comedy. There's action. Great animation. Many, I think, are going to just have a good time. So, let's get started. Let's talk about one of the main central points that I think needs to be discussed, which is the world building. Stuff that was discussed in this episode towards Bam, our MC. So, Bam, as we know, is a character that's kind of like a blank slate. He doesn't really know much about the world. He has no idea who the princesses are, who Zahad is. He doesn't know what rankers are, what it means to be irregular or irregular. He doesn't know exactly the order of the tower, the laws, etc. He's completely a blank slate, which is kind of fitting, honestly, when you think about the presentation of the story. It's like, this series is literally not trying to give us too much information because they don't want to ruin the surprises, but Bam is someone that's happened to climb the tower to learn, and we're learning alongside of him. And for this to also be the first series that's, you know, being like a big series that's become an anime from a webtoon, it makes sense too to be like, you're learning with the character. It's fascinating, honestly, to look at it like that. But uh, getting back on point though, Bam, he doesn't really know much. So he asks one of the rankers that he managed to get a conversation with, like, what is an irregular? Or the first question he asks, actually, is, have you seen a girl with, you know, blonde hair and freckles? The man says no. So, obviously, Bam wants to continue searching, which I'll get into that in just a moment. But carrying on, he asks the man, what is an irregular? And the man's like, it's someone that wasn't really brought into the tower, someone that wasn't chosen, someone that pretty much forcibly came in without being asked to. They just arrived, and there you go. And when you look at Bam's situation, it's very apparent that he is an irregular. He knows nothing about what the world is. And Rachel, as well, you can consider as an irregular, too, because she entered into the tower without permission, without being chosen, very similar to what Bam has done. So they are different. They're not following the normal regulations. But it goes much further than that. The world building expands upon the tower, that there is two sets segments and a middle segment. You have the outer part of the tower, like the like the outer ring, then you have the inner part of the tower, and then you have the middle section that connects them both. So basically everybody within this world is pretty much born on this tower and not many know what else is out there. They don't know what's out there, what is p potentially, you know, going on and Bam is someone that is very different. He's someone that comes from a completely different world, something that is obviously not similar to what others, you know, happen to them. So it's kind of like Bam is an irregular among irregulars, most likely. So that's interesting to think about. But it goes much further than that. It starts to make you wonder, okay, so if Bam isn't necessarily born in this tower, what was going on there? What was that door? Was that a gateway, a dimension or whatever to a world? Is this like secretly reincarnated or transferred to another world type series? There's so many questions you start to gain. But then on top of that as well, it starts to make you wonder what is going on with Bam? Is he incredibly strong? Because the Ranker uses his Shinso, which is basically magical energy, to shove everybody back and put a wall up and you have to pass through it to be able to prove that you're worthy to climb the tower. Now, he does say that when it comes to climbing the tower, there's a lot of things to factor in. There is strength, courage, help, but also mainly luck. And in this case, you could kind of view Bam's situation as being very lucky. He was someone that was on the proper side. He was lucky he didn't get pushed back. But then Kuhn and Rock, they pretty much talk about it saying like, uh, we, he was standing right beside us. We got pushed back, but he didn't, which starts to make you wonder what was going on there. Why wasn't Bam pushed back, and why did everybody else do it? Usually the ones that look very strong were the ones pushed back, but Bam, someone that doesn't really obviously have a lot of strength. I mean, he has the weapon, the Black March, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's probably holding him from falling back, because the one that has, like, a very similar weapon, which I talked about in my first impressions, got knocked back. So, so many questions pop up from that, and it makes you wonder, so does this mean that Bam might be immune to, you know, being forced back from magical energy? Is he incredibly strong? We'll have to see. 
But, um, anyways, I do think the world building of Tower of God is incredible, and I will say, as someone that has read the webtoon, I, the world building gets better and better as time goes on. I, I do truly think, though, that it's not as up there with One Piece, but it is definitely really, really large. Like, the world is massive. There's so much to learn. There's so many things that's happened within this world. So many different little things that connect together. I really do think that if you love world building, if you like the exotic worlds of, let's say, One Piece or something like Hunter x Hunter, then you're probably really going to love the world building of Tower of God. There is going to be so much more, and honestly, I cannot wait to really talk about when some of the stuff really starts to get dived into. So, okay, let's back up for a moment. Let's talk about our characters. So, obviously, I should talk about our main cast of characters that were introduced, which is Kuhn, Rock, and obviously our main character, Bam. Now, Bam, we know how he is. He's searching for Rachel, and that's his main objective, which gets into what I said I would talk about earlier. His objective is to find Rachel, and it's kind of like, it's a very weird obsession with her. He is someone that is driven to find her no matter what, even at the risk of his own life. He doesn't know where he's going, what's up apart, uh, like deeper into this tower, going higher and higher. He has no idea what to expect. He's willing to risk life, limb and limb, just to be able to do something to find her. And the thing is, he might not ever find her. And the reason for that is because you gotta remember what happened in this episode. It was a test about the last survivors of the floor of test. So, for all we know, Rachel could already be dead. Like, she legitimately could have died on that floor of test, or a previous floor of test, and she's no longer around, which pretty much means that Bam is gonna be searching and going up the tower, even though she has been long dead. So, that is a thing to consider. You know, even though Bam is continuing to press forward, she could already be gone and had succumb to something, because Bam is incredibly lucky. He's encountered people that's helped him out, and it's helped him be where he's at right now. I mean, one of the big things that the ranker said was that luck is a big part, and obviously Bam has gotten very lucky. He's met Kuhn, which is very supportive and helpful and fascinated by Bam and what weapon he's holding the Black March, but then you have Rock, which is a very strong crocodile that is literally like a, a crazy hunter. He wants to hunt, the thrill of the hunt and all of that, and he has now joined their side because they were forced to, thanks to to the floor of test so it's like it starts to make you wonder so he's gotten very lucky but does this mean that Rachel has gotten that lucky is she lucky enough to be able to survive all these tests because if she's higher up than bam we don't really know the time gap of how long it's been from her separating from him or not but we don't really know where she's at how long it's been etc so you're like for all we know she could be long gone like very far up there or dead so, yeah, good questions to really think about. So, Kuhn is fully introduced in this episode. Well, not fully. Just some of his personality is revealed, but shows that he's not necessarily a bad guy. One of the big details to think about is what he said to Bam, saying that with the 200 that need to be whittled down, like the last people surviving, only 200 people, he wants to find 200 people that he can ally with and be friends with, etc. People that are not necessarily nasty individuals, people that were going around killing each other, etc. So, Kuhn is someone that does have honor. He's a good man. He isn't evil by any means, but he does have a side to him that does seem to be very cold. He might have a cold side to him, which is why I said that with you look at his character, the way he's presented, he reminds you a lot of Killa from Hunter x Hunter, and you can definitely see that impression from him once again throughout episode 2. Then you have a character like Rock, which is kind of similar to Hisoka in a way. He's the thrill of the hunt, and he thinks that if Bam continues to get stronger, it'd be more exciting to hunt him. That personality of Hisoka coming after Gon is there. So, like I said, there is a lot of, like, vibes you get from other series from this, which honestly makes me appreciate Tower of God even more. But okay, so with those character introductions though, I want to talk about a very funny part. A comedy part that caught me by surprise the way it was adapted within the anime, and honestly, I can see the face being completely memed for the end of time now. Shibisu, with his Joey face. That, honestly, I... I was really surprised with the high quality nature of how shocking it was done. Like, I, I didn't expect that type of face the way it was animated like that. And I was just like, holy crap, they just did that. They literally have a face that's pretty much Joey from Yu-Gi-Oh! And I'm like, okay, this is, this is going to be a quality adaptation. Or even adding in the comedy segments, which I think many are going to be shocked about too. Is that, you know, when it comes to Tower God, people probably were viewing maybe a serious story, a journey, etc. But probably weren't really expecting a lot of comedy. But it's very 
very clear that Tower of God does have its own way of doing comedy. For instance, you have this scene with, you know, Shibisu and how he's not able to go through the wall of Shinso, and, you know, he puts that smile on when the other girl is not able to go through it. He just laughs to himself. It's a great, great facial expression. And they managed to power through it, which is awesome. And I love the music for that scene. It's honestly amazing music to add into the series. And I talked about this already in my, uh, you know, my preview trailer talks, etc. It's like, look, the music is already great from what I heard, and I can't wait to hear it fully. And hearing the music is just, it's honestly, oh, it, it takes me to a, a place, man. Like, it just, I love what it does to my ears. But okay, um, but Chibisu is a great character, and like, especially with the comedy where his two teammates literally walk off, they're like, let's go find a teammate, because they think he's completely useless, and they don't really want to work with him, and I think many are going to be reminded of, like, an underdog type character, a character that is very, like, I guess, expressionate, like, he, he expresses himself a lot, but doesn't really have a lot of power. That's kind of what you get from Chibisu, is that he definitely has a loud mouth, he's definitely obnoxious in a certain way, but he's an underdog because he's not really very strong, he's really got to work for what he wants, and I think many are going to kind of gravitate towards his character saying, holy crap, he's interesting because, you know, he's not being gifted, he's having to work for it, there's a lot of effort being put into it, and, you know, just the way his personality is too, it's crazy, and I, I love underdog characters, and I think many can agree with me, underdog characters are fascinating, so I think, Shibisu is definitely going to be a high contender for one of their favorite characters, at least at this point in time, for Tower of God's anime. I guess one of the other things to really dive into is the Shinzo that radiates throughout the entire floor. The Ranker tells the dude, like, hey, do you know that when you get up to, like, floor 30, the Shinzo is going to be so strong that you're not going to even be able to walk or move? And he decides to shove the Shinzo on this dude that didn't really think it was fair to not be able to walk through that wall. So he's like, I, I, I don't think this is fair. This is not right. I proved myself. I've given up so much to be able to be here, which kind of lets you know that everybody that's here in this tower right now have probably given up something or left something behind, very similar to what Rachel did. Rachel gave up Bam to be able to journey in the tower. Every Everyone's given up something to be able to be here right now, and if they fail a test, it's kind of like disrespectful to those people that they left behind or what they did leave behind. So it's interesting to see just how strong the Shinzo is, but also the mentality of people that continue to push forward. There's something so grand up there that they're willing to give up everything, and it's even mentioned that if you are really good with Shinzo, you can even reach maybe immortality, which is kind of crazy to think about. But I want to leave it at that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below how you felt about this week's episode of Tower of God. Did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? Please be honest in the comments below. I'm very curious to see what you all think. But I love you guys. Be safe. Stay healthy. Chibi out.